Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to talk about checking if apps are spying on you. There is nothing worse, you're using your computer, everything's fine, and you just have a feeling that someone is watching you. Maybe you say something, and then the next day you see an ad for the thing you were talking about. Today I'm going to show you some tools you can use to help track down a potential spyware, figure out what data your apps are collecting, and also restrict it if you're unhappy with any findings. So, this video is not primarily going to be about malware. I already made a few videos, I'll have both of those linked, one where I show you how to use powerful virus scanning tools, and another one where I show you some heuristics that you might be able to use to find undetected malware as well. But not all spyware is malware, because spyware can also be used figuratively. One program that is commonly called out is Google Chrome. Some people also, uh, don't know, but Firefox by default still collects a fair amount of telemetry, and pretty much everything else is constantly sending data back and forth. So the first program we'll take a look at is Wireshark. Now I don't really recommend using Wireshark for this, but as the OG of this type of program, I think it gets an honourable mention. So what does Wireshark do? Well in simple terms, Wireshark simply captures every packet that goes through uh, that leaves your computer. Now the problem is, virtually all internet traffic these days is encrypted, and there's no DNS resolving built in, or really any, or any app level tracking, so it's very hard to figure out what's what. But the fact that when we open the start menu, we see some activity might be cause for concern. We open this app, just wait for it a second, oh boy, while we can't read what's going on here, I'll show you how to do that in a second. You can probably figure out that there is a lot of activity, whereas when we're not actively in this, there is a lot less activity. So that's sort of interesting. Now one thing, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I do just want to show off something, because people also talk about websites collecting a lot of data, just think about everything that's said about TikTok, or any app. So how can you tell what data is actually leaving your browser? show you a simple thing, and this is a cool tool that uh, one of my mutuals made. I think it's a great product. And one of the things that makes it really cool is that everything is done on your computer. So how do we verify that they're telling the truth? Well, let's say we just downloaded a lovely picture of Lame, but it's in that weird AVIF format that nobody likes, and we want a PNG. So what do we do? Well, we can go here, we can go to the Network tab, so you hit F12 on your keyboard. Pretty much every browser uses that. There also might be an Inspect option. You go to Network tab in DevTools, now you watch. Is this AVIF really that awful? It actually doesn't even work on this tool? I don't even think, I don't even think that's the problem. I think that site uh, actually uh, shipped, it, shipped a PNG as an AVIF. We can now choose, and we can get a different one. Uh, we can see that no upload takes place. You can also, because sometimes the URL changes, so you can set a preserve log option, which can further highlight this. So we can see that no upload over the internet ever took place. We did not upload the file to their servers. Now I think they do for video, just because vid processing video in browser isn't really feasible. They do it, but they do disclose it. Now if you go to a different file converter that works in the cloud instead, you'll get a different result. You can also see Pretty much anything, like if you do it on a YouTube video, you might see some interesting things about how they track watch time. So now let's get into the real video. So there are a few tools you can use. The one I'm going to show you and that I think is the best is HTTP Debugger Pro. They're not a sponsor, and unfortunately it isn't free, but they have a very permissive free trial. By that, I mean you can just download it and use it for free for seven days with no questions, no credit card. So if you're just curious about whether your software is trouble, it's easy enough. So we'll get this started and then I'll explain why I really like this solution. So HTTP Debugger Pro is actually not a proxy. Most of these type of systems are called a proxy, and that means that you have to set your apps to use it, and apps can just ignore a proxy. HTTP Debugger Pro installs a driver that gets into the network stack that redirects it to the program. As a result, it's very useful for testing, and is the easiest way to do this without a dedicated VM. So we can do all of this, yep. And now this one is what we're going to use. Now I recommend doing this, but then after you're done using it, I would remove this from the trusted certificates for security reasons, because this does mean they could technically, they can decrypt all of your traffic, but if you want to see what your apps are doing, 
this is a great tool. So now that we've done that, now uh, we can try any of our apps. So let's just try FUBAR2000. I have a feeling that app doesn't, doesn't do anything suspicious. Looks like we're right. But does it have a check for updates? It does. Now it's trying to open something. And we can see everything that was sent. So it simply gets the update core version and sends the version that it's currently running, and it gets a 1 saying that there is in fact an update. I think that's perfectly defensible. Let's try some other software. Now one everyone seems to be concerned about is Opera GX. I get it, they're advertising everywhere, but their browser doesn't really have a revenue model, so is it doing anything nefarious? Well immediately we can see a homepage, it checks our updates, and then it's, got, it's showing us some ads, site check, co-merchandise, API config, Opera, wow, wow, there's a lot of activity there. And then it checks for add-ons, uh, games, that looks like a YouTube link, so I probably went to YouTube. Okay, and what I like about this tool is that it shows which application is responsible for which thing. Really simple feature, but it makes it a lot more user-friendly. Uh, we can go to a website and we can see, like, as I saw with some of the browsers I've shown in my malware videos, sometimes they might be tracking every website you visit, which you do not want. I'm just going to go to uh, this site that I have, purely because I know that it doesn't, unless we're having server issues, then I might have to try something else, but purely because I know we're not, we don't collect much data. We can see, okay, I, I'm gonna have to check my uh, web server. I was working on some stuff last night and I might have messed it up. But, okay, try something else. We'll try Wikipedia, because that also doesn't collect a lot of data. Okay, Wikipedia, Google, that was just for the Omnibox, which does, as you'd expect, given it shows suggestions, send everything you're typing to Google. Google, Wikipedia, Opera CDN. Ooh, that's interesting. I think this is called Opera Turbo, but... That, and I, and of course this must be pre-coded somehow, but that might be a bit concerning. But this isn't a video about Opera, we're just showing how we can see. So I don't see a ton of stuff, but the way that was set up, that would mean that Opera does know you're going to Wikipedia, which I don't love. Now let me show you Firefox. So immediately, here's what's being sent. This side is what's being sent, this is what it's sending in response. So, detect portal, settings.service. Now we've got all that pocket rubbish that nobody uses. Uh, this is an update check. Telemetry, ooh, this is what we don't like. At least I think a lot of you don't like. Okay, so we get that. Run date, our language, our, and just some of the stuff we've done. It's not full-blown spyware, but that's quite a bit of data. And we know exactly who's responsible thanks to the application. Now let's also see, what about NVIDIA? Okay, so we sent something to NVIDIA Grid, but that's, there's nothing super interesting there. And we can also see local host, so we can see uh, some sort of NVIDIA inter-process communication. You can see, oh, we've apparently agreed to have all of our behavioral data tracked. And this is the old GeForce experience, which won't work without an account, but we can see an incredible, incredible amount of stuff going on here. Inevitably, a lot of this is just going to be to check for driver updates. So, as I mentioned, this is not a free as in beer, nor a free as in freedom product, so what are the alternatives? Well, you can use the setup, if you really, if you just want to test a specific app, you can use the setup that I do in production, which I have actually made a video showing you how to do, I'll have that linked. Uh, but the TLDR of it is, you see this WireGuard VPN setup in my description, or in my uh, taskbar, right? So this goes to an MITM proxy server that I run on the host, because this, what you're currently looking at is a virtual machine through WireGuard. Because it goes through WireGuard, which of course is a VPN service, it doesn't have the ignore the proxy problem that a proxy server running on the same computer would. You can do this with a second device. Like if you have a laptop, uh, you can run the wire the MITM proxy server on there from your desk and connect your desktop. That would also work. That is 
the most powerful way. It doesn't have app level information, but it's still, it's very powerful and it's pretty much undetectable. Another one that has a free and open source option is HTTP Toolkit, which is a GUI. It's all self-contained for the, that is based on MITM proxy. This one also has an integration with Android Studio, so you can use it uh, for reverse engineering Android apps. I've actually used it for that. Now, the final question is, all right, let's say that in this, uh, you did this and you discovered something you're not comfortable with. What can you do? Well, everyone is going to say, just replace the program. And sometimes that's a good option. There is ungoogled Chromium or LibreWolf, or in Firefox's case, you can actually turn off the telemetry. We can go, we can get rid of all of this, which of course will happen. It will be enabled by default, but at least then you can get rid of it so you don't get any more. With Windows, there are tools like Oh No Shut Up 10 that can help. Uh, but for other apps, well, there is a great tool called Tiny Wall. This is a completely free and open source firewall. Uh, on Mac, there's also Little Snitch, which does roughly the same thing. This utility can do for you is it can actually let you uh, customize which applications can use the internet. So things you can't avoid installing but don't want to have internet access, like the NVIDIA drivers. Now, that's, that would, of course, kill auto-update, but it can still be totally usable. Most software will work perfectly fine without an internet connection. There are a few exceptions. Adobe, of course, or you might have to, might not be able to use that method, but here we go, tiny wall, tiny wall controller. We can open up the manager. And this, by default, creates a zero trust deny by default. But what should happen now is that a lot of these programs that haven't been granted do all right. Should these have internet access? Now this NVIDIA app, let's just get HTTP debugger so we can see, uh, won't be having a lot of luck with whatever it's doing. Another technique you can use if you see uh, in here is if they use a subdomain, which they almost always do for their telemetry or tracking, uh, like this services.mozilla, you can just simply null root that by editing your hosts. So this get pocket, you can simply null root that. You can simply go to your host file and null root that. Because you're net, if you are confident that you don't want it. There are also block lists. Uh, like there's one for Windows as well that you can use to do that. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you found it interesting. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this and if you want more videos either about how to do this for yourself or just testing various programs to see what's really up. Is there some spying going on? That's all for me for now. Bye.